Hello, Book Leaguers. Welcome to Book League Storytime Adventures. Have I got a great video for you. This is the Bentley Hippo compilation, which includes all five of the Bentley Hippo read-alouds. There's a reason why teachers love these books. The characters are colorful and wonderful, and each story has a different social-emotional lesson. The author, Argorography, is just a great person, and she has this big vision for Bentley, and I know he's gonna be huge. You can watch this all the way through, or skip to the book of your choice in the description below. I'm really excited for you to listen to these books. Let's go. This first book that I'm going to read is called The Adventures of Bentley Hippo, Inspiring Children to Share by Argaro Graffy. Just like the title suggests, this inspires children to share. It's great. So let's go. Bentley Hippo had one thing on his mind. He was thinking about his grand space adventure, wondering what it would be like. The dream was so exciting that Bentley didn't notice the strange sounds in the distance. Bentley was just about to blast off when something mushy bounced right off his noggin. Ouch! he cried. Who threw that banana at me? It wasn't me! said Toby as he joined Bentley. The two friends had planned to meet for some ice cream. They didn't know where the banana came from. Not wasting any time, they decided to go get their ice cream when a voice called out. I'm Jackson, the monkey quipped. What's your name? I'm Toby. I'm Bentley. You shouldn't throw bananas, Jackson giggled and replied. I was sharing. Jackson quickly ran off. Bentley and Toby realized that Jackson did not know how to share. Look, Bentley, he's still throwing bananas, Toby said, turning towards Bentley. Oh, mumbled Bentley, landing on his back. He got up and brushed himself off. Just look at all these bananas. Where did that monkey go? As they walked toward the ice cream cart, Bentley shared his big space adventure with Toby. That's exciting! Maybe I can come along and help you gather moon rocks, exclaimed Toby. Bentley and Toby couldn't wait to get their last tasty scoops of ice cream. They heard soft whimpering sounds near a bush. Curious, the two friends walked toward the sounds. Jackson was so busy guarding his pile of bananas that he forgot about his ice cream. Hi there, Bentley called out as they walked toward Jackson. Jackson grabbed another banana. He gave it the perfect wind-up and... Oh no, not another banana, hollered Toby. Duck, Bentley! Don't you want a banana? asked Jackson. We love bananas, but not thrown at us, replied Bentley. We came over to share our ice cream. Jackson thought for a moment. Please don't throw ice cream at me, begged Jackson. Bentley chuckled as he explained that sharing didn't mean they were going to throw ice cream at him. Sharing is fun, smiled Toby. Especially when you're not throwing things, giggled Bentley. Look at all these flavors of ice cream. Why don't we share them, suggested Toby. They shared their ice cream scoops that each had a little of every flavor. Jackson was happy he learned something new. He handed a banana to Bentley and one to Toby. That's when Bentley got a great idea. Mmm, delicious banana splits, exclaimed Bentley with a smile from ear to ear. Toby and Jackson nodded their heads as they were too busy to speak. I like this way of sharing, mumbled Jackson with a mouthful of ice cream. Bentley and Toby nodded in agreement. All that ice cream gave Bentley a lot of energy. He spread his arms like wings and began talking about flying in space. Toby and Jackson wondered what they might find in space. The three friends couldn't wait for their adventure to begin.
I'm going to read another Bentley Hippo book. It's called The Adventures of Bentley Hippo, Inspiring Children to Be Kind. I'm looking forward to reading it with you. Let's go. Bright colored leaves covered the roads. It was fall and the children had returned to school. The row of buses in the parking lot could only mean one thing. The trip to the fair. Bentley and his friends waited excitedly for their bus to pull up to the curb. The children cheered with excitement as the bus stopped and the doors opened. Careful and watch your step, the bus driver warned. Bentley and the others jumped on. With their seatbelts fastened and a signal from the teacher, it was time to go. The driver started to sing. Jiggle while you wiggle. But don't forget to giggle. Look up, look down, look all around. Find someone you can tickle. The children hummed, clapped, and stomped their feet. They were having so much fun. Except for Toby. Bentley heard laughter and looked back. The children were picking on Toby. We must tell the teacher, Bentley whispered to Jackson. Children were nudging Marty, who was usually very quiet. Come on, say it. Are you chicken? They called out. The bus arrived at the fair. One of the children grabbed Toby's glasses, jumped off the bus, and ran. Children, gather around, the teacher continued. Stay together. Jackson had wandered off, one way from Bentley, and he returned to the group in time to hear the teacher's instructions about staying close together. Bentley. I might get in trouble if I go home without my glasses, mumbled Toby. The children reported what had happened to the teacher. She reassured them she would address this at the end of the day. The friends helped Toby look for his glasses when they approached a few rides. Let's take a break, Bentley called out. Toby feared heights, so he sat close by and watched. Toby! His friends called out, waving from high above the ground. The ride finished. Toby! Bentley called out. Where are you? They heard giggles. <laughs> Jackson grinned as he spotted Toby. Scared you! Toby laughed. I can't go home without my glasses. Do you think we'll find them? Gasped Toby. Everything will be okay whispered Jackson. It wasn't nice that your glasses were taken, Bentley replied. I'm surprised that Marty was mean to you on the bus. They continued their search when suddenly a voice called out. Bentley and the others turned to look. Help! It was Marty behind a tree, surrounded by other children. He looked scared. Ignore him, Jackson said firmly. Being afraid is not fun. I think we should help, insisted Toby. As Bentley and Toby walked toward Marty, the others quickly backed off. I'm sorry I made fun of you, Toby. They made me do it. I took back your glasses and I ran, but they trapped me. Here you go, Marty whispered. The friends talked about what had happened. They were glad that Toby had his glasses back. On the bus, the teacher talked about bullying and peer pressure. Bullies like to pick on those that are different, but you all stuck together and helped Toby. She smiled, and I hope this doesn't happen again, she said as she glanced at Marty. Everyone learned an important lesson about kindness. The trip to the fair had been a success after all. But oh no, the driver took a wrong turn. What will happen next? This was an important reminder that bullying is never okay, and it always makes people feel bad. But remember, just because everyone else is doing it does not make it okay to do yourself. Marty learned that lesson. Peer pressure is not a reason to bully. Stand up for yourself and stand up for that person that is being bullied. I'm going to link the rest of the Bentley Hippo books below. They're great. Give them a listen. Bye-bye. This one is called The Adventures of Bentley Hippo, Inspiring Children to Never Give Up. It's very touching. I know you're going to like it. Let's go. The bus driver had taken a wrong turn 
when someone shouted, Stop! They all looked out the window and saw a busy playground. Yippee! A new playground! cheered Jackson. Bentley and his friends decided to check it out. It's over here! called out Marty. The playground was next to a large building and his friends decided to take a look. There were lots of children on the playground. A little girl watched from her window as the others played. Bentley waved to her, but she quickly ducked out of view. Bentley wondered why. Then he realized, The large building is a hospital. Jackson ran up to Bentley and asked, Why is that boy walking with a stick? Why is that one in a wheelchair? Why? Bentley interrupted Jackson. He worried that the questions might upset the children. It's best not to talk about others when we don't know about them. Let's say hi, said Bentley. Jackson smiled smartly, standing stiff and proud as Bentley made their introduction. Hello, my name is Bentley, and this is Jackson. The children giggled and replied, Jackson, you are so funny. Then they noticed Bentley's shoes and said, Wow, cool shoes! Why isn't the little girl in the window playing? asked Bentley. That's Julia, explained one of the children. She can't leave the room when she has one of her treatments. Bentley thought that must be difficult and wondered how they could help. Meanwhile, Jackson was fascinated by the children's sticks, wheelchairs, and special glasses. He listened intently as they told him how these things helped. But Jackson could only stay still for a short time. He suddenly jumped up and shouted, I have ABCD! Bentley chuckled. Jackson, you don't have ABCD. You have ADHD. All right, agreed Jackson. Daisy then shared that she sometimes stutters due to autism. Well, you're all loved just as you are. It's what makes you, well, you. And nobody else can be you, said Bentley. Bentley suddenly stumbled. His friends didn't know he can only see out of one eye. Whoa, ho, oh, ho. I'm okay, he quickly said as he brushed himself off. Right now, Julia is sad. Maybe we can help her. Everyone huddled around Bentley as they made a plan. They wanted Julia to know that they also have bad days, but only one person could visit her in the hospital, so Bentley volunteered. Julia's face lit up when Bentley walked into the room. She was happy to have a visitor. Bentley began by sharing what everyone wanted her to know. She was delighted that they wanted to cheer her up. Julia could relate to Toby's diabetes because she also had to pay attention to what she eats. And Julia was relieved to know she could wear a wig like Marty since she lost her hair. We never give up and neither should you, said Bentley as he turned Julia toward the window. I met your friends and they can't wait to play with you again. Julia's friends were waiting below the window with an inspiring message just for her. It was the coolest banner she had ever seen. Julia's eyes lit up. She felt loved. I have to go now, but this blue bag is for you. It's a little something from all your friends. And there's one more thing, said Bentley as he placed a large coin in her hand. Whenever you feel like quitting, look at this coin and remember, you can do it. Bentley said goodbye and gave Julia a hug. Then she discovered the blue bag was stuffed full of encouraging messages from her friends. There were a bunch of letters and pictures, and this is what some of them said. Be healthy so you can come out to play, Alicia. Get well, Helena. Dear Julia, you are so brave. I hope you are good to play again. You are doing a great job. Always be happy. From Mateo. Julia held the coin as she said goodnight to the children below. The messages had warmed her heart. Julia smiled as she thought to herself, Today was a good day. Tomorrow will be even better. The End Remember, I'll have all the Bentley Hippo books in the playlist below. And also remember that everybody is going through something. Some are harder than others, like Julia. 
And it's also very important, if you know somebody that's going through a tough time, be a good friend and be kind. It means the world. Bye-bye. The Adventures of Bentley Hippo, Inspiring Children to Be Patient. This one, I'm sure you can tell, the lesson is to be patient. And I'm trying to be patient to slow down on this intro and not jump into the book. But I'm not doing a very good job, am I? Because I want to go read it because it's great. Let's go. Bentley heard frantic knocking at his door. It was his friend Jackson. He was pacing with excitement and too excited to speak. Jackson motioned for Bentley to follow him. Bentley noticed some bright red arrows that weren't there the night before. Something cool must be happening nearby. He hurried along after Jackson. At the end of the path were colorful flags, speakers playing music, and people waiting in line. Bentley could see his friends Daisy, Toby, and Marty waiting in line. An announcement blasted over the speakers. Ride the big blue rocket! Marty looked at Bentley and exclaimed, Get in line so we can ride together! For Bentley, nothing could be more exciting than going to the moon. But the line was long. Toby, Daisy, and Marty went to get ice cream for everyone while Jackson and Bentley saved their spot. When they returned, the line had barely moved and Jackson just couldn't stand still any longer. He ran to the front of the line and tried to sneak in, but he was caught and sent back. Jackson jumped around saying, I have to know what's going on, as he waved his arms exclaiming, All this waiting is torture! Smash! Jackson bumped into everyone like a ping pong ball and their ice cream fell to the ground. They were all shocked, but Jackson was too frustrated to notice what he had done. I'm so excited, Jackson cried. He tickled Bentley's ear and said, Bentley, Bentley, stop frowning. It's going to be so much fun. But Bentley had just lost his ice cream. Jackson, Bentley told him, just stand still. But I'm excited, Jackson argued. We all are, but we aren't jumping around and trying to push in replied Bentley. The ticket agent approached Bentley and his friends. Jackson looked away and whistled nervously. <whistles> he hoped his actions didn't ruin things for everyone. The ticket agent warned them to settle down or they wouldn't be allowed on the ride. Bentley had to take a deep breath so he could be patient too. <sighs> then he began to help Jackson. Jackson, it's unfair to jump in front of the line explained Bentley, and jumping up and down affected others. I'm sorry, Jackson whispered. I was just trying to see what was going on. Even though the ticket agent stood in front of Jackson, he still tried his best to sneak across the line. Being patient is trying to stay calm even when you're excited. You can talk to your friends, play I spy, or take deep breaths to calm down. How about looking up at the clouds to find fun shapes? I see a gummy bear, said Toby. I see a bunny, exclaimed a little girl waiting in line. The ideas worked. Before they knew it, they were at the front of the line. Jackson stepped up to the agent holding the tickets. I see you made it to the front, said the agent. Bentley and the others giggled. <laughs> <laughs> Jackson quickly held out his hand. Not so fast. The agent replied, are you going to behave? Jackson nodded, so the agent handed everyone their ticket. But something wasn't quite right. Bentley read the ticket, and Daisy noticed his expression. Follow me, said the agent as he led them around the corner. There it was, the big blue rocket. But it wasn't a rocket at all. The blue rocket was a giant hot air balloon. Hey, where's the rocket? Jackson asked with frustration, but the balloon was beautiful, and it was huge. Bentley's friends hoped he wouldn't be too disappointed because floating in a balloon isn't the same as riding a rocket. Bentley didn't mind at all. Jackson's excitement instantly returned. It'll do! It'll do! Jackson shouted as he rushed towards the basket. Jackson sprung forward but realized he was being impatient again. He looked at the others and asked, who wants to get on first? Soon, everyone was up, up, and away. 
This ride is awesome, exclaimed Toby. Daisy and Marty thought the kids below looked like ants. Jackson pretended to fluff the clouds. Bentley was glad that Jackson knocked on his door today. They all learned about patience, enjoyed some ice cream, and had a fantastic time sailing away in the hot air balloon. The end. Remember, I'm going to post all five Bentley Hippo books in the description below. You're gonna love them. Go read them right now. Well, I guess be patient and then read them. Bye-bye. The Adventures of Bentley Hippo, Inspiring Children to Accept Each Other. I think it's a wonderful book, so follow along with me. Let's go. Bentley and his friends floated down in their hot air balloon. It landed near a pier and they jumped out. Bentley, we have a surprise for you, a voice called out. Bentley's eyes widened. His new friends from the hospital were gathering holding a large banner. Bentley loved surprises. He was eager to find out what it was. He was so happy to see everyone, especially Julia, with her big, bright smile. But why were the children thanking him? Without hesitation, Jackson began to explain. We want to thank you for being a great friend. Just as Bentley was about to speak, Jackson blurted out, Look, Bentley, look! Turn around and look! Bentley turned and could not believe his eyes. Up ahead was a rocket ship. A real one! It's the space adventure, Bentley, Julia said. Bentley was so excited. His dream was finally coming true. Whoopee! Jackson hollered. This is it! You're finally going to the moon, just like you've always wanted. You never gave up on your dream, Bentley, and you never gave up on us. He grinned, leaping into the air. You taught me how to share and be patient. You taught me about bullying and being kind. And you taught me to have hope and to never give up. Bentley felt proud. His face beamed. I'm glad I was able to help. But that's what friends do. Bentley was so excited he bounced from side to side. He cheered. He laughed. He danced. He had never felt so happy. Arriving at the gate, Bentley and his friends were greeted by a tall man in uniform. He looked at Bentley, then the others. He stared without saying a word. Bentley walked up the ramp, heard a click, and looked back. Nobody else will be riding the rocket today, the man said. Why not? asked Bentley. The man began to speak. Too bouncy, too short, pink wears glasses. And on he went. Bentley's heart sank. His excitement turned to disappointment. This is your adventure, not theirs, the man said. Jackson leaned towards Daisy and whispered. Has he lost his marbles? Shh, replied Daisy. Bentley walked down the ramp with a confused look on his face. What kind of adventure would this be if he couldn't share it with his friends, he thought. If you don't want to miss the adventure of a lifetime, you should get on board, the man said, pointing to the ramp. My friends are more important to me, Bentley continued. You're not being fair, and that's not okay with me. Sharing this adventure with my friends will make it more special, Bentley continued. Yeah, and who are you calling short, blurted out Jackson. You shouldn't pick on others because they are different. That wasn't very nice. Do you see, Jackson? Bentley told the man. He doesn't like name-calling, but even though he is short, he is very kind. Marty is darker than the other lions, and he wears a wig. Daisy is pink, which makes her look different, and sometimes she stutters, but she is super smart. Toby wears glasses. Billy has a prosthetic leg. Julia doesn't have any hair. I walk on two legs. All the other hippos walk on four. We are all important and we are all proud of who we are. I am because nobody else can be me. And you are you. We are all unique. And without my friends, I'm not going. But let me ask you a question. How can you say no to this face? Bentley smirked as Jackson showed off his biggest smile. The man thought for a moment as he glanced at Jackson. You're right, Bentley. Going on this adventure with your friends will make it even more memorable, he said. Skippity-doo! And don't forget to share! 
Just like we did with the ice cream, Jackson called out. The man looked over at Jackson puzzled. Didn't you already say that? He giggled. And what ice cream? That's Jackson. And that's why we love him, Bentley said. Being kind makes everyone happy. And I was very wrong to judge you all. That's okay, Jackson replied as he bounced around. Is there something you'd like to say? Chuckling, the man said, I think the right thing to do is to let all of you go. They climbed aboard the rocket. Jackson was last. He turned and waved to the man, inviting him to join them. The doors closed and off they went. It was an incredible ride. Everyone shared funny stories and gazed out at the stars. Seven, eight, nine. Jackson, what are you doing? Julia asked. I'm counting the stars. Well, you missed a few, said the man. That's okay. I'll just count them on the way back, he giggled. The ship landed. Bentley was bursting with happiness. He had never seen anything more beautiful. His dream had come true, and it was perfect. This is awesome, Bentley, Toby called out. I'm having so much fun. I can't wait for the next adventure. What are we going to do now, Bentley? Asked Daisy. Smile! The end.